With this movie, we start a pretty cool section on working with morphs, how you change the appearance of a character. As I'd mentioned at the very outset, Poser is a content manipulation software, not a content creation software. So to change anything that's in here, there's some steps you go through, and that's what we'll take a look at now as we get into the face morph manipulation. I've got my basic Simon G2 character in here. I'm going to zoom in with the face cam. I'll click on that, and we're right there. This maybe has a little more shadow than I want for the purposes of this demonstration, so I'm going to change one of the display options right now from hardware shadows to no shadows. So what's happening now is that where the lights are positioned in the default scene, if the lights are high, they light up everything that is facing upward. So that just lets us still see a little form without casting half the face into shadow. Again, changing the parameters makes life much easier when you work with characters in certain situations. Morph and face changing, what is that? The character's head right here, we can see as I roll over it, is made up of several parts. We've got eyes, we've got a mouth area. All these things are able to be manipulated. Now, not everything on a character can be changed the way I'm going to show you with the face morph. They can all be custom morphed, and we'll look at that coming up shortly as well. But what I'm going to do is come over to the Simon head. And right here, we've got body parts and the way this particular menu flies out. When I actually get to the head area, which is under neck parts, it flies off the screen so you can't see it. We can have the exact same selection right over here in the upper left of the poser preview window. So neck parts, head. When that's highlighted here, we see our standard controls right here. And what I'm going to do is get rid of our library palette here for just a little bit. I'm simply going to say close. You can't see that. And again, I can't get that little menu to flip in there. But I want to make sure we have got this full disclosure here for face morph. Now, morph is just a Latin term for change. I guess change shape is what you'd say, not just change alone. But there are many controls inside of this for every area of the face, brow, eyes, nose, etc. Well, let's look at how we can control some of those. With the disclosure for brow, we've got some specific choices that we have here. So we can go ahead, if we click on brow up center, I can click and bring this up and we can give our character a quizzical look, or I can bring it down and have him scowling just a little bit. Furthermore, I can go ahead and, if we're speaking of scowling, I can actually increase a scowl preset right here where they come down. If I want to furrow the brow just a little bit in the center and make it look like he is not pleased at all, I can do that. So the morph dials themselves are very quick and easy to use. Additionally, instead of clicking and dragging, if that's what you're doing, you can go ahead and click directly on the numbers and enter specific values. When we get into posing characters with eyes and those types of things, you may want real specific settings. The nice thing, and one of the reasons we have so many options, is that the human face is rarely symmetrical in its expressions. So you do have the ability here to bring in that same level of asymmetry with your characters. And the asymmetry is actually much more pleasing to look at. And if you're going for a realistic look, Asymmetry is usually a better way to drive home reality than having everything in a CG perfect world. So if I wanted to take this brow up left a little bit, I can go ahead and raise this just a touch to do something like that. Other options we have here too, say for example for the eyes, this is a great way to control the eyes themselves if we want to go side to side with both eyes at the same time. Instead of entering those values individually, like you could if we simply selected the eye and did the little cascade here and went all the way out to body parts, neck, neck parts, you actually can choose the eyes individually. The morph target, believe me, is the way to go with that. So this way, if we go eyes side to side, that's nice. If we wanted him looking slightly up, then we can adjust that. And finally, if we want to go ahead and have him blinking just a little bit, lowered eyes, maybe he's a little bit skeptical about something. So really a fun, fast, easy way to go ahead and customize some of the options there for something like eyes. Additionally, with jaw, we have things like left, right, so we can further bring home the asymmetry a little bit, like that. Lips, we could have our character smile a little bit. Maybe we could be suspicious of what's going on. Really, it's just great fun to play with. And that's what I wanted to cover in this section, specifically with phenomes here, we've got the ability to shape the mouth into specific vowel and consonants that happen when a character's speaking, and we'll deal with this more in a movie coming up too. Well, that's great. We've got an expression we like. 
What if we are creating a character where we want to have similar expressions because they behave a certain way? You saw me raise an eyebrow up here. That's kind of a old world Star Trek Spock effect. Well, if we want to keep repeating that look or have a specific look, there's a way to do that. And we'll deal with that in our next movie.